All right, hello museum families and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. So my name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I am an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live, learn, and raise a family on this land. So where I am right now, if I walk that way, which is south, about 10 blocks through Beacon Hill Park, I would make it to Dallas Road and the beach and then the water. And I never take for granted the beauty of this land and the close proximity of water and the ocean to my work and my home. It's a real gift. But as, as with anything we love, we also need to take care of it. And the oceans are definitely in need of some love and care. One of the ways we tap into, we can tap into this love and care is through creative action, using our imagination and our inspiration to guide us in what we do. And that's what today is about, as we paint the ocean we want to see. But first, we wanna go back to last week. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. Um, as I usually do. So I'm gonna pull this over now that I have, I have two screens now. Um, so last week we, we traveled to Kelowna in the Okanagan, the Okanagan Valley. And we met Jen Gardner, who's, um, who works at the Kelowna Museums. And we learned all about bats um, and especially how bats navigate and, and move through the world through making sounds and listening with their huge ears. And that one bat in particular had ears that it almost seemed like the ears were as big as the bat, um, which was beautiful to see. So Jen um, was kind enough to, to explore with us uh, the world of bats. Um, last week, we didn't make any art. Uh, we did a little bit of an activity around the echolocation, but we didn't make art. Today, we will. Um, and I'd love to see, and I know Rain would love to see what you come up with as well. So feel free to share that with me and my email is cocconnor at royalbcmuseum.bc.ca. I'll put that in the chat and, we'll, and my colleague Kim will put it in uh, the Facebook live feed as well. Um, definitely share what you come up with no matter what. Um, we'd love to see it. Uh, you could also share it through our social channels at Royal BC Museum or, or hashtag RBCM Kids. After the session and from now on, like always feel free to come back to the museum in person because we are open, but also online through our learning portal. Um, it's an online like place for discovery, lots of different um, ways of, of learning about British Columbia and this land uh, through different pathways. So you could Google uh, Royal BC Museum and Learning Portal or just use that link there. The next week, um, we're gonna be exploring bent wood boxes with Cowichan educator H Hannah Morales. Um, so it's beyond the box. And uh, Hannah will do an activity, activity where we make a bent wood box out of paper, but then also um, she'll talk about some uh, Cowichan stories as well. So, that's next week, so definitely come back and join us for that. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And, um, and I'll come back. So in this format, just so you know, in this format, um, this is a webinar, it's not a meeting. So um, you can see your host, that's me, and our special guest today. Um, Rain, so do you want to wave, Rain? <laughs> um, though you can't see us, we can hear from you. Or we, you can't see us, we can hear from you if you use the Q&A box or the comments section if you're walk, watching on uh, Facebook Live. Um, please ask us questions as we go along. Um, and heads up, we'll be making some art today. So you'll need paint, a paintbrush, paper or canvas. If you have them, straws, sponges, or plastic bags. Don't worry if you don't have these things, not a problem. You could watch this now and then again later 
uh, when you do have them, because we'll be recording this. Um, but so make sure you do things at your own pace and be kind to yourself. So let's meet our special guest today. Today, um, we're joined by Rain uh, Eli, Eli Chris Bennu. When it comes to creativity, Rain does it all. She's a painter, photographer, videographer, poet, performing artist, and I'm sure I can go on and on. Um, and she also cares a lot about the ocean and the animals that live within it, which will guide our session today. So um, welcome, Rain. We're so glad to have you here as part of RBCM at Home Kids. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm really happy to be here and uh, to be able to do a little painting with you guys today. Um, I, I've been painting since I was a little girl, and my first experience with painting was with my grandmother. We used to watch someone called Bob Ross on TV, and his whole idea was that anybody could paint, and it was impossible to make mistakes. Um, and so I've always carried that idea with me in my painting and in my life, because I think it's a wonderful philosophy. Um, and so what I want to share with you guys. It's, it's funny, just to jump in for a second, because I was thinking during my introduction, I was thinking of saying, today is kind of like a combination of David Suzuki and Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's funny beautiful. that you say that Bob Ross is an inspiration. Yeah. So. Very much so. No yeah. mistake, just happy accidents is what he used to say. And yeah, yeah um, what I'm going to... Uh, teach and talk about today is a style of painting that's called meditative painting and the idea with it is that you take a feeling or thought and you put it on paper. So um, I'm going to do uh, a couple of little exercises with you guys very quickly to just warm you up and then I was hoping that we could paint some oceans and really explore maybe thoughts or feelings about the oceans and the way they are today. And we have, I brought with me a special speaker who's going to talk a little bit about the oceans and why they're so important and some of the things we love about them. Um, so, um, Chris has talked about the supplies you need very briefly. And uh, don't worry if you don't have all the supplies or if you're missing something. I'm going to give you a couple of options and choices when we're painting so that uh, you can play and experiment here, even if you don't have everything. Um, even if all you have is crayons, you can still join us. There's no, there's really no limits. Um, and uh, the most important thing is your imagination and just being here and wanting to play and listen. So, um, the first thing I want to do is I would like to take just five minutes and we're going to do a short exercise to help warm you guys up and get a sense of how this works and what, how meditative painting works. Um, and so what I would like you to do is I'm just going to switch my camera over um, so you can, I'm going to paint with you guys so you can actually watch and we can do this together. So. Here we are at my, uh, my lovely desk. And for painting, you can really paint on anything. I, I brought these rocks out because I wanted to show you guys that, you know, you can even find things in nature to paint on. There, there's really no limitation. I do a lot of rock painting. And that, it, that looks like an orca, right? That is an orca, in fact. I, I do a series of orcas and seals that we use to raise money for uh, orca advocacy and to raise awareness to the oceans. This is a baby orca, as you can see. Nice. Uh, and, you know, then I also do some abstract, uh, just fun pieces. Um, so all you need for this exercise is some, some sort of paper. Now, if you're painting on a table, make sure that there's something on the table underneath it so that the paint doesn't leak through. And really the only thing that you need with your paper is to make sure that it's thick enough that the paint doesn't leak through onto what's underneath. Um, it's really good to have some sort of rag so you can wipe your brushes. And um, if, if you have a pen, that's great. Uh, paint brushes and a little bit of 
water is really lovely. And so what I want you to do first is you can do this with a pen or a marker or if you want to do it with paint. I want you to just draw a line right through the middle of your page. And what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through a very short little kind of meditation slash visualization. And we're going to go from there. So what I want you to do is we're going to start with happy. And I want you to take a minute and I just want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Yes, nice and deep and breathe out. And do that again a few times. Just breathe in and breathe out. Wiggle your toes. You know, wiggle your fingers. You can, you can wiggle in your chair if you want. Just like notice any sounds in the room around you. Just be present where you are right now. And as you're breathing, I want you to think of the memory. The first one that pops into your head of something that makes you feel happy. Really, really happy. That makes you feel so happy you want to give up and laugh. And there's no wrong answer. Whatever comes into your mind first is the exact right one. Now, think about this memory and think about where you were, what you were doing, maybe who you were with, and just feel that feeling in your body. And maybe notice where it is in your body. And does that feeling have a color? Does it have a shape? Does it have an image or something that goes along with it? You know, just notice it and just experience it and be able to it. Now, what I'd like you to do is, if you have your paints, find a color that makes you feel happy. You can open your eyes and I want you to just take One or two colors can make you feel really happy. And there's no wrong answer. Any color is perfect. So no one else can tell you what color makes you happy. This is really entirely up to you. So pick a color or two or three if you'd like that make you feel happy. I put them on your tray and now take a brush if you have one. If you're using crayons, you can do the same thing. Just choose some crayons that uh, are the color that makes you happy and you're going to put a little, you're going to put a little water on your brush like that. And you're going to put some paint on your brush and now I want you to just put your brush on the paper for a minute, close your eyes, and just let your hand move a little bit carefully. And once your hand has started moving, you can open your eyes and you're just going to paint. And I don't want you to worry about what you're painting or what it looks like. I want you to just put some paint down, feel that happy feeling. Remember where you felt in your body and what the experience was like. And you can paint anything you want here. So the idea with this kind of painting is you're trying to paint what you feel. And feelings aren't necessarily, they don't necessarily look like a thing. Feelings often get represented by colors. And so what we're doing is we're creating kind of experience for people to look at and we're playing with paint. And so maybe when you're feeling really happy, you make big swirls, or maybe you make dots because they're bigly and they make you feel good. But this is the idea. You just want to paint something that's kind of fun and playful and that really helps you feel that feeling. And so you can only do this for just like another 30 seconds. I just want you to get the idea of what it feels like.
Okay, guys, now this is very important. If you're painting, what you want to do is you want to wipe your brush on a cloth. Um, you want to have as little paint on your brush as possible. At the very end, I'm hoping to show you how to more safely get rid of your paint um, so that you're not pouring paints back into the water. Um, so, once you've done this side, you're going to turn it around. And now, we're going to do the same thing. But this time, we're going to paint sap. Okay? We're mad. So I want you to, again, just take a second to maybe jump up and down for a minute real quick. Just shift the energy around. Just bounce. Okay, now, wiggle your toes and take a deep breath and breathe out. And just know that what we're feeling and thinking is just something that's happened before. This is a totally safe place and it's a chance for you to feel a feeling but nothing bad's gonna happen to you. This is a really good time and space to feel this feeling. So if you feel scared, just know that you're totally okay. And um, this is really just a good way to express or experience this feeling. And hopefully when you paint this, you'll feel a little better. So what we're gonna do is I want you to just close your eyes, wiggle your toes, and breathe in and out. And I want you to remember a time when you felt sad. And just remember what that felt like. And it probably feels very different from when you felt happy, right? And that's okay. Feelings are really important because they help us understand how we experience the world. And they tell us when something's wrong. So take a minute and feel that feeling, whatever it is. And feel where it is in your body. Maybe it feels heavy, or maybe it feels like it hurts a little bit, or maybe you feel just sad behind your eyes. I just want you to feel it. And what color do you feel or see there? If you think about it, what, what color is that feeling? Where do you feel it in your body? Now, while you're feeling this, again, I just want you to look at the colors you have, and I want you to pick one or two, and there's no wrong answer here, that maybe connects to your sad feeling, okay? And we're gonna do exactly the same thing, just with sad colors this way. And sometimes the same color can be happy and sad depending on how we feel on a given day. As I said, there's really no wrong answer to this. It's whatever really makes sense to you. So I want you to pick a different brush if you have one, okay? And same thing, get the brush wet with your water and put some paint on the brush. Feel that feeling and put the brush down for a minute. Close your eyes and use your hands very slowly. If you don't want to paint the table or anything else, do not paint your cat. Do not paint other people. You just want to paint the canvas. Just going to let the brush move. Feel that feeling. Let it move. And once you started moving the brush, you can open your eyes so you can see what you're doing. And then just take a minute to just paint that feeling that you're having. And this might be very messy. No, but there's no wrong answer here. Just feel that feeling and paint what it feels like to you. And if you want to paint a shape or lines or something specific because that's what you see or feel, that is totally okay. I like abstract styles, but that's my personal style. And so if you see something that makes you feel sad or scary and you want to draw a picture of it, you should totally do that. So again, just want to take one minute and just do this and just give yourself a second. And the thing is that we can say a lot with color and shape without ever saying a word and without it having to have a particular shape. That's the idea. So 
Just a couple more seconds here. These are really fast little paintings. Um, what I will say, uh, don't forget to make sure you wipe your brush before you put it in the water. So when you're cleaning your brush after you've used it, you're going to wipe it and then you're going to put it in your container and you're going to swish it around to get the paint off. Great. Now, I'm going to leave those for a second. I'm going to come back over to see your lovely faces. Say hello. There we are. So that's just to give you a very, very short idea about how meditative painting works. Um, I actually have a free course coming up online on Udemy. Um, and it's going to be a two hour version of this that goes into much more depth if you want to play and paint. Um, you can actually find out more details when it comes out on my website at digital-enlightenment.net. So if you felt like that was really fast and it, you know, wait, you want to do more, it's okay, you can. Also, you can always come back and play with this more and you can always try those exercises and pause the video if you're watching this back and then take more time and play and experiment more. Um, so what I'd like to do thinking, now. I was thinking, Rain, just uh, by doing that also just it really honors the the emotions that you're feeling and like by yeah. by working through that maybe like even that sadness starts to transform a little bit or or goes further in and just really honoring where where you're at with that so where we're at with our emotions so absolutely and in fact doing it like this is hard because you feel a feeling and then you're very quickly just painting it yeah. um but given the time constraints i wanted to give everyone a chance to experience a little bit of both um but what I'd like to do really briefly is, if you're sitting down, can you just stand up for a second and just like jump up and down, you know, just like kind of shake your body around. We just want to shift the energy because we just did something sad. We don't need to feel sad now. We want to get back into our bodies and back into a better space. And yes, ideally you want to take more time and you want to be able to explore those feelings and certainly give yourself some space to paint and play. And yeah, and build up the painting. These paintings can take a very long time to paint. You can actually build them in layers. You can paint it and then you come back to it. You can evolve it and, and grow it. And I talked about this a little bit more in the longer workshop, but um, getting the sense of how to just paint how you feel is always a really good place to start. And I think feelings are very important. And I'm acknowledging how you feel about things can really help people and help you really understand the world around you and what you're experiencing because feelings are there to help teach us and help us be better people and help connect and have more empathy for other people. Um, so the more we can get in touch with them, the better. Um, and that uh, brings me to uh, just, I wanna take two minutes to bring in a special guest to talk with you guys a little bit about the oceans, which is what we're gonna be doing next is painting the ocean. And so I'm gonna bring in um, the lovely Mark Laren Young, who is an author who writes about orcas. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about orcas in the ocean today. Mark? Hi, I'm just going to talk. I, I'm coming to you live from Atlantis. So this is the official uh, DC background of Atlantis. And I thought it was perfect because orcas everywhere. And also for regulars of RBCM at home kids, we'll remember Mark from a few weeks ago uh, when Mark did a story time with us around orcas. So, now, welcome back. Uh, thanks. It was really good to be here, Chris. Uh, thanks, Rain. So, I Rain just wanted me to talk a little bit about the oceans, and I'm going to be really fast because you've only got what about a few more minutes left. It's about ten minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, I just wanted to let you know that I mean, on the sad part of the oceans, we're dealing with pollution. We've always got to watch what we put into the water. We've got to watch out for, basically, keep in mind that when you throw things away, there really is no way. A way is pretty much the ocean. When, we, when things disappear, that's normally where they're disappearing to. Now, one of the few positive things that has been coming out of the strange times we're living in is that the oceans are quieter, there's less pollution going into the oceans. And 
I'm a big fan of the Southern Resident Orcas and who you're going to get to learn a whole lot more about next year when there's an orchid exhibit at the Royal BC Museum that I was lucky enough to work on. And, you know, one of the things we don't think about is that for orcas and the sea life and the marine life, sound is pollution. The noise from our boats is pollution. I mean, how many people do you think we're putting together boats with? Yeah, this propeller is pretty loud. Well, that's one of those things you have to think about because orcas hunt, we're, I gather you were talking about echolocation last week, orcas hunt using sound. So when they're looking for food, they're sending out, they're, they're using biosonar, they're sending out sound signals to connect and communicate with each other. So the fewer boats there are, the, the less sound there is, the easier it is for the orcas to hunt. And one of the things that we're seeing that's kind of amazing, if you're online, is you're seeing all of these images of orcas coming places we haven't seen them in ages. And I wanted to just end off with something kind of cool and optimistic when we're talking about the happy side of the oceans is there are only 72 southern residents in the oceans right now but right now there are members of all three pods j k and l that are pregnant including talaqua the orca who lost her calf a few years ago and the hope is that because we're not taking out as many fish because it's quieter basically because of the pandemic we're dealing with that the orcas are gonna have an easier time giving birth. So hopefully that number of 72 is going to go up very, very soon. And Rain, unless there was something else you wanted to hit. No, and, and I've, yeah, Kim's just shared the link to the story that I did and to our shared future. And Rain's also got a lot of her photographs in my book, Orcas Everywhere. So if you'd like to see Rain's photos, including photos of orcas. That's in orcas everywhere. All right. I'm going to go so back much. to painting with you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. That was wonderful. And so, you know, there's so many amazing things about the oceans. And honestly, we could talk about them all day. There, it's a huge passion for both me and Mark. But um, I'm just aware of our time. And so what I want to do is just take a couple minutes here and do an ocean start an ocean painting. So what I'm going to do is I want you guys just to take a minute now. I want you to do the same thing, just wiggle your toes. That helps you feel a little more grounded, maybe wiggle in your seat. And if you want, close your eyes. You know, feel yourself sitting in your chair, taking a nice deep breath. Breathe out. And I want you to picture the ocean, the most beautiful ocean you can imagine an ocean full of life, an ocean that brings you joy. Maybe it's a memory, maybe it's the ocean you'd like to see. And I want you to just picture that and feel how that feels. Just hold that image in your mind. Notice what's there, notice what's not there. And just take a minute and really hold that. And now what I want you to do is open your eyes and we're gonna go back to our space over here. And what I would like you to do is just take a minute and I'm going to, you can use any tools you want. So sponges can be a really great tool to play with. Plastic bags are very sad for the ocean, but can be lovely for paint. And so as we're wrapping, I'm gonna show you guys a little cool little technique. And if you want to start painting while I'm showing you this, you can absolutely do it. So with the plastic, because it has a shape and a structure, that's lovely, is you can use it to make texture on your canvas. And so if you want to make like a coral shape, you can actually just have a lot of fun with plastic bags. It can give you some really amazing texture and feeling. And so when you're thinking about your happy feeling, don't be afraid to play with anything that you have in your toolbox. If you see fish, 
for people, for orcas, for seagulls, for a beautiful sunset. Don't be afraid to add that to your painting. This is a chance for you to paint and play and experience anything you would like in this function. It's perfect world. And I would very, very much like to see what you guys come up with in that respect and get a chance to hear about your perfect oceans and what you see is kind of the ideal ocean world. Such a, there's so many amazing possibilities. And um, I love talking about the ocean. For me, my perfect ocean has orchids in it. Always, lots and lots of orchids, swimming with their families, eating lots of salmon, happy, free, and lots and lots of sea life and coral and other beautiful wildlife. What is your ocean having? Another really cool trick is if you have paint on your canvas, like I do here, and you put a little water on your brush, and actually move your paint around a little bit like this, you can get a wash effect. And just remember with your paint, with the amount of water you add, you will determine how bright your paint is. Now, as you guys are painting, something that I want to talk about very briefly, because it's important, is how you deal with your paint water once you're finished painting. Because I'm hoping you'll go on and continue to paint this painting and you make more paintings and play, and maybe come and paint with me again another time. But when you're finished your painting for the day, you're going to have a bunch of paint water. And it's going to look like this, right? It's going to have paint in it. It's going to become black and dark. And normally, you would dump it down the drain. Um, but the problem with that is that the paint water, painted, especially acrylic paint, is more plastic. So you're basically pouring it back into the ocean. So ideally, what I would love for you to do is When you're finished, you want to take your paintings. Now, I put this in a pill bottle because they seal. So this is a good way for me to do this demonstration. You're probably going to have more paint than this. Put it in a container that has a lid on it. Um, and you're going to let it sit. Usually, if you let it sit overnight, that's enough. But sometimes it has to sit for a couple of days. And what will happen is the paint will separate. And it'll go to the bottom of the container. And when that happens, you're going to pour off the water on top and leave the sludgy paint bit in the bottom. So you've gotten rid of most of the paint in the water. What that'll leave you with is something that looks like this, right? That's your gross, yeah, that's your leftover paint. And you let that dry and then you scrape it out and you throw it in the garbage. Um, that avoids it going into the water system and that is the best way to deal with paint. It doesn't require any chemicals or any other sort of um, there's other ways to do it, um, but this is one of the least, um, this is one of the safest ways to do it. You just let it sit like this and dry. And like I said, make sure you put lids on your water when it's sitting and put it somewhere that you have pets that they can't get into it. Because my cats like to drink out of our water glasses. So we have to be very careful because we do not want them to drink the paint water. Paint water is not good. It's not good for cats. So it's just really good to do that. And you can ask your parents for help with that. Um, and then once it gets to this place, you can let it dry and it's really easy to scrape out and throw out. And actually the same thing with your paint trays. So when you get to the end, and you have your paint tray. If your paint tray has still got paint on it and you wanna leave it for the next day, you can take a piece of tin foil, or if you've got a Tupperware container that you can seal it in and put it in the fridge, this will last for a day or two. You can keep it and you can reuse your paint the next day. If you're still painting. Um, and when you're done, you wanna, again, cover this and leave it somewhere where it can dry. 
and then you peel it off. So you don't want to wash, like if you had all this paint left over, you wouldn't want to wash this and put it in the sink. That's, that's really bad for the ocean. Um, and it's really bad for uh, the water system. You just cover it, let it dry, and then you peel the paint off and you can throw it out. And if you're having a little trouble peeling the paint off, um, once it's completely hardened, you can rinse it under hot water in the sink. That will help the paint peel. Just make sure that you catch all the paint that comes off and you throw it out. Uh, and that's really one of the best and easiest ways to deal with your paint and with your brushes. And hopefully that will help you do something while you're painting that's a little bit friendlier for the planet. You know, we're all aware that paint is not, and being an artist can be really challenging when you're trying to be kind to the planet because we work with a lot of materials that can have chemicals in them. But I do love acrylic paint because it's pretty safe non-toxic and also because it's relatively easy to dispose of and you don't need to have any special tools or materials just just water and time really well, i really appreciate that rain i and um i think thinking about the whole process of painting um and afterwards as well and where where the things we're using goes, I, I think is really, really important, especially if we're painting about the ocean and that care it, um, extends beyond the actual uh, painting process. So um, thank you so much. I, I'd never really thought of that as a, as a process to do after painting. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I realized when I started teaching this particular workshop for Oceans Week that um, I had to talk about this because it's really silly to talk about painting oceans and the importance yeah. of them and then not talk about how to deal yeah, with totally. them. <laughs> and sometimes I mean, it's easy to think like you, it just goes into the sink and then it goes into nowhere, but it doesn't actually. So um, exactly, it, it all comes back to the ocean. So, um, And thank you so much for the beginning, for both the, the, the meditative process of, of painting feelings and then also the beginning of the process of painting the ocean that we want to see. I know when you when you asked us to close our eyes and envision a, the ocean we want to see, I, I, it, it was very clear what the, that was for me. So like um, just even thinking about inspiration and starting from there. And I love that the process of using the plastic bag. And even when you were doing it and then the paint would start to lessen it, like become, um, more thinned out, it created really beautiful patterns as well. So um, thank, you. thank you so much, Rain, for, for joining us today. And um, as we said earlier, we'd love to see where you take that um, and where your, the, your vision of an ocean, what you started and where you go with it, um, what it looks like. So definitely um, share, your, share your art with us. And, uh, and yeah, uh, thanks to Mark as well. I don't know if you're still there, Mark. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there any last last words you'd like to say, Rain? Um, I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming, and I really am excited to see what you guys paint. And I think it's really important. It's easy to get into doom and gloom, but we have to see the things that we want to work towards and that we care about and we fight for. So having visions of the world you want to see and the oceans in particular, because it's such a big, big thing to address and there's so many problems, is such a wonderful way to start. So, you know, don't be afraid to have big, bold visions and yeah. don't be afraid to paint them. Yeah, it's a great, great uh, sentiment to end on. So um, again, thank you so much. We'll, we'll end the Facebook live feed now and the recording. There goes Facebook live and the recording.